There aren't many denim houses that can say they've been around for 30 plus years. Hi, I'm Rebecca Brayton and welcome to WatchMojo.com and today we're learning more about denim legend Parasuco. So if you could just kind of outline the history of the Parasuco brand. In 1972, I was 19, I opened my first store and I had no money to do advertising. And in 1975, we started a jean company called Santana Jeans out of frustration because some of our suppliers were not making anything interesting. I always like making stuff, developing stuff, and it's grown from there. I think the first year we did $72,000 in business. We're working out of our house, shipping from our house, and we became one of the first brands out of Canada that became international. Parasuco started in 1988 because in 1988 we wanted to start selling to the U.S., but since we were not very educated, the Americans had copied our name, Santana Jeans. So my staff pushed me to use my family name, Parasuco. I was a little bit reluctant because when I was being an immigrant in school, the kids were laughing at my name. But now I see it on a lot of people's butts, so <laughs> I got my revenge. We developed the stretch denim since 1976. We developed black over denim since 1987. We were the first to do denim dresses. We have a very proud history, and next year we'll be 35 years in business. Not too many people can say that. Now, is there one model that the Parasuco brand has kind of appropriated and made their own? Not necessarily one model, but we're very, very well known for our stretch. And you'll see people, every time they touch our jean, they automatically do this, you know, like it's an accordion or something. Because we were the first in the world to advertise stretch. That's also what's great about our company is that our stuff from the 70s and 80s still looks good. Is it difficult to stay current? Because it seems like it would be difficult to keep reinventing the gene. I still like what I do. I'm still on the lookout for new things. Sometimes it is difficult to come up with something new, but sometimes it's not necessarily coming up with something new, but a different way to do it. There's many factors to think about. There's comfort, there's cost value. You'll go to the big guys and pay $1,000 for a pair of jeans, but I gotta give you something great for $120 or $110. If you could outline the fall winter 2009 line for us. It's a lifestyle. We got stuff for everyday living to make you look very interesting, to make you look sexy, to make you feel good. If you don't want to feel sexy, you can still feel comfortable because sometimes it's painful to uh, look sexy. <laughs> we don't really follow trends, you know, we sort of create our trends. We look at ourselves, our people, our customers, what they like, what they don't like, what they need, why they need it. And you know, and also considering the economy situation, we sell to other stores and those stores have to make money. So we have to listen to what they need. So in a sense, it's a big balancing act because it's not just we're gonna do a fashion show and oh I got inspired by some guy living in an igloo no no that's not what it is we get inspired by real people everyday situations everyday financial restraints but that doesn't mean you cannot offer quality I tell a lot of people maybe I don't have $300 to go to a fancy restaurant but I know where you could get a great sandwich for five bucks thank you very much my pleasure thank you